All right, Tania. Tania, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I'm from LA, um, West Adams District, and just all over the West Side, but that's where I first grew up, West Adams District. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your family. My family, um, I grew up in a, it was my mom and my stepdad. Um, my dad was in jail like all my life, in and out of jail. So because my mom had me young at the age of 15, um, and my dad was always in jail, she was like a single mom until she met my stepdad. And I guess we were a happy family, but me personally, I felt like, it wasn't really no love from my mom because I don't know if she didn't like me because of my dad. And this is real shit. Like, I know we hear it a lot, but she just looked at me like, you better not turn out to be like your dad. And she was very strict. So, you know, growing up in a strict household, you know, you rebel. And that's what happened. You went to the streets? Straight to the streets. What age? At the age of 15, I kind of knew like, okay, I'm not gonna be here. But I didn't want to do it in a disrespectful way because I was always respectful. I was just looking for like a way out. Um, so I met a friend and she was my best friend at the time. And she knew what I was going through with my mom and my stepdad. And I just felt like, you know, my mom was settling for less with my stepdad. So I'm like, you're always worried about him, da 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 da. I don't need to be here. And I got into it with my stepdad and then my best friend was like, you should just leave. And I'm like, I know, huh? So I ran away. And when I ran away, my whole life just changed. But I lost my virginity first and then I ran away. So they think I ran away because they were saying like, I'm gonna get a little vulgar. Oh, you got some dick? You feel like you can leave now? Like you feel like you grown now? And I'm like, no, y'all don't want me here anyway, da da da, that drag. So, I left and I just started like making money, doing whatever I had to do because I had to survive. Which meant what, working the streets? That and whatever I could get my hands on as far as money, you know, stealing, finessing, whatever. So you, you learned how to play men. Exactly. Really fast. And it's like, okay, so when people see you in the street, you know, they kind of get an idea like, oh, this girl ain't got no money, so you wanna make some money or you need some money, you know? And the opportunities just came so fast because me, I'm like, I was mature for my age too. So it was easy for me. Like I used to let them know like how much you got, like, you know, what you got. It was always with me, what do you have to give me? I never just let nobody just, you know, use me. It was always, what can you give me? So I started getting, 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 and it became addictive. Like very addictive so fast money oh yeah fast money you know a lot of money for my age and you know you get money fast you go through it fast so you, you finished high school yeah i finished high school so when i was in the streets i still was like i kept like a good communication with my family because i didn't want to burn them bridges you know and my mom wasn't happy because she didn't like how I still was like surviving in the streets. She was like, this girl thinks she could just be out and do whatever. So me and her relationship was never, it's still not good. And um, no matter like what I you know, try to do, like even if I changed a little bit, she's still not going for it. But um, yeah, like I kept, I kept a good relationship with everybody and they just, they knew what was going on and could nobody stop it, basically. But what did you ask me? No, it was basically what you were doing. You, so you, you started out working the streets, but you eventually... Started doing other things. Started doing and, other um, Yeah, like just at a, at a certain level and, you know, meeting new people, meeting new hustlers. They giving me the game and just telling me like how I should do things. You work with pimps? Have I worked with pimps? Yeah. Um, no, they always tried to knock me though, all the time, still to this day, like, and I got to keep telling them like, no. So at this point, they like, oh, you a renegade. Like, you just do whatever you want to do. Yep. And so what are you doing currently? You are, how, how would you describe it? I would describe my life currently 
I'm a finesser at heart. I'm going to always get what I need to get, but not in a bad way. You know, like I said, I'm, I always come with it like respectfully. Um, I'm straight to the point, you know, you're not robbing your tricks. Or yeah. I'm not robbing my tricks and I'm straight to the point. Like they know what I need. And like, you know, I have kids now, so it's like to the point to where I need a lot. I get everything paid for Like my bins right now, I don't pay for it. My rent, I don't pay for it. Nothing. I don't, but I still get money, but certain things they got to pay for. So when you say you're finessing men, tell me what that, what that looks like. So finessing is, if you got the gift and the gab, like I do, to basically make somebody feel how they need to be felt, if that makes any sense, um, whatever their needs are, like, you know, you, you give it to them, but it's in a way to where you could get so much out of them because of what they need, so you end up getting more. So like, People think finessing is like just tricking somebody. No, my way, I got to finesse you the right way because I need to keep coming back for more and more and more. It's not just one time with me. What does that mean? Like telling the guy you need this to pay your rent, you need this to Or like, you know, kids? yep, all of that. Or just basically saying like, you know, like I can do this for you, I could do that for you. And basically being like a necessary thing for these men. And they need it. And I don't know what it is about me, but I got that certain little touch, baby, to where they so, always so rather than being a, a hoe on the street, you're you're more of a sugar baby. Exactly, mm -hmm. sugar baby, sugar baby. And that makes makes you better money than working the streets. Oh yeah, um, it's more safer. You know, I don't got to worry about because you know people on the streets you deal with so many weirdos, creeps. You can get hurt. It's, different it's guy, like different guy every every hour. Every hour, probably every even thirty minutes. Right. And at this point, I need to have, like I said, a relationship with people. So, like, I have like a like millionaires, NFL players, um, athletes, doctors, real how many, people. How many sugar daddies will you have at one time? I mean, about over 10 at once. Really? And how long will these relationships last? They still going on. <laughs> Until maybe something like, you know, they they don't have enough money or because, you know, I'm not cheap. I'm really not cheap. You know, when I first started, I used to, you know, when people first start, you get kind of like fucked over. And but when I start realizing what my worth was by the type of sugar daddies I was getting, I'm like, wait a minute. I don't need to charge two or three hundred. I need to charge five, and then I need to charge a thousand. Oh, this one gave me fifteen hundred. So now, you know, I'm getting more, and it's like, it's like so easy too, very easy. But you got to know what you're doing though, and it got to be a purpose, you know. And, the, and these relationships are sexual sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Are they always not always though? Not always. Um, I get lucky <laughs> a lot to deal with people who they're so busy and they just want either somebody to talk to or, you know, um, I started a career in body rubs. So like I was making so much money with that. Like I'm talking about a day, 3000, just easy body rubs all that, day but long. But that's a sexual relationship. It is. It's kind of like a girlfriend experience type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they want a body rub once a week and you're seeing them a lot and like, they're giving you everything, you know, on top of gifts when you come, um, body rubs. Um, oh, let's go out to dinner. It's more than just, you know. And these guys are married or single or both? Both. Both. And then I like when they're married, too, because I'm like, we can't do nothing because you're married, <laughs> you know. And it's not like I wouldn't want to do nothing. Like, it's been a few guys where I'm like, dang, like. Maybe I should just stop doing this and I should be with them. But then I have to think like, nah, you're a sugar baby. Stay in your lane. Have you been in love before? A few times. Has there ever been a client? One of them, I was falling for him, but I couldn't have him. He was too, he was taken. And he was very successful. And I loved his whole house. Like imagine like me, I'm from the hood, right? So while me being... People think, oh, you're touching all this money. You're supposed to be living far. Sometimes you don't. 
sometimes you still be stuck in the hood or just going through life. And like I said, fast money. So like you're using it for your needs and then you're, you got a spending habit and kids and all this is not how you really want it to be. But I wanted to stay with him. And he, see, he was in a relationship, but you know, they didn't live together. So like I would be there for like a week sometimes, you know, and I could come like in and out. And I love the whining and dining, but it just wasn't my life with him. So I had to like wake up. Do you have a spending addiction? Oh yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, what I've learned is pretty much almost <laughs> maybe all these women yeah. that do this kind of work have a, spend, a shopping or spending addiction. Yes, cause you gotta look the part. You know, you gotta, you can't just go over there like you think I'm getting 500 to $1,000 just for looking like trash. Like I gotta keep myself kept up always clean yeah, but you can do that for less than a thousand dollars you can you can you, you could look like a you really can you could do everything you need to do with probably three hundred dollars right and then be done for the the day or the week but but it's addictive but you keep spending keep spending and that's what are you, you know, saving at all hmm? are you saving money at all yeah so now i'm smarter now and of course like because i know it comes fast i make sure that i save you know um I do my priorities first, of course, and like I don't have to spend so much. I keep all of my stuff together because oh, when I first started, I would be leaving clothes at people's house. I would be doing just fast, you know. I, I'll get a phone call. I gotta leave. I got the money already. I don't care about nothing. I go over to my homegirl house. I'll let some people wear it. It's like I was losing a lot. You lose a lot, you gain a lot, but you gotta be smart about it. You have to be smart about this shit because it ain't as sweet as it look. What are the downsides of this lifestyle? Mm. Does it affect you emotionally? It affect, it affects me emotionally. Um, you feel like you're selling yourself? Yes, all the time. And you're a sex object, right? Yeah, like a sex slave, you know? And it even got me into a situation before where... I'm going to say that in a minute, but I would feel bad because when I try to date, you know, guys that throw it in my face. They'll get mad. Oh, you ain't nothing but a hoe, bitch. You know? Bitch, how many niggas you fucked? And saying stuff like that. So I'll be like, oh, you wasn't thinking about that when we first got with each other? Like, boy boo. But now I understand, you know, they can only imagine what I tell them. They don't really know, you know, the real reasons why or what really happens. They don't know because they wasn't there. And that would affect me emotionally. But I got myself into a situation where I was about to get sex trafficked. And this was like, this was like three years ago. And I was just like, it was a close one. You know, I, I came up on this prince and he was Arabian and he flew me to Miami. And he said I was gonna be there for two weeks. We were in a $30 million house and I ended up being there for a month and I had to escape, okay? And we were meeting so many girls and girls from Love and Hip Hop was coming in the house and celebrities was there and all of this stuff, but it started to get real weird. You know, it was a lot of drugs and like, I don't do hard drugs like that. Like I was smoking weed, you know, and they were doing hard drugs and stuff. And it was just like, it was getting, my, like my gut was telling me something bad is about to happen. But he was trying to like distract us. We're buying this stuff. We was going shopping and doing all these things. And for some reason, I felt like, like I'm used to getting shit, but like this right here, where am I about to be tomorrow? And why are we still here? So then he says, well, we're going to go to Cuba. So the girls start talking in the house and they're like, girl, I got to get back home. And he said that I can't leave. And I'm like, well, what is he gonna do with us? Then, you know, we had went to some celebrities' house and we ended up at P. Diddy's house. And I just started hearing conversations and I just got sex trafficking from it. Because, you know, I heard the prince saying something like, oh, you can have whoever you want. Like he was like selling us, you know? So I'm like, is this sex trafficking? Like, what the? And, it just, it gave me a, a whole nother outlook on everything too. And I had to like, really like pump my brakes on how I do things. And maybe because a week before that, I had just said like, 
I want to be in Miami. I want to be around royalty. I want a nigga to spend this a much amount. And I realized everything that I said that I wanted, it came like the next week. But it didn't come how I wanted it to. And I don't like nobody saying I can't leave, you know, when I want to. Like if I get got to get back to L.A., handle some business, I'm a mother. Like, what you mean I can't leave? So. You have kids? Yeah. My, yes. How many kids? Five kids. You have five kids? Yes. So you need money to to take care of them. Are you are you raising your kids? Oh, yeah. I'm raising my kids. They're all with me. Um, but at a point in time, I'm going to keep it real. They wasn't. You know what I'm saying? They are now. They wasn't. It was It was always at my grandma's house, at my mom's house, because I had shit to do. And I was in the music, you know? I was singing with YG at that time. Um, and I had been for like a long time, but in and out of that, the music wasn't paying, so I really had to finesse. And I would be meeting like people in the industry and I'd be finessing them too, you know? But I made sure with them, we would have like relations, but I wouldn't like have sex with them because I didn't want it like coming up like, oh, you fucked that producer or, oh, you did that, right? So I was real low key, but they understood, like, you know, you got a, you got mouths to feed. But at the end of the day, I've been through so much and I always think, like, why do I do this shit? Like, you know, I self-reflect with myself, like when I'm got my downtime and I'm looking at my kids and I'm like, what would I be doing if I wasn't doing this? And then I go back and say, well, how did this start? And I came up with, and I didn't even realize it at first, but while I was ran away and I was 17, you know, I was, remember I told you I was still going to school. It was my choice. My friends, none of them graduated. I had three best friends. None of them graduated. Three different best friends. Like we went to different schools and they still didn't graduate, right? And I was like, I gotta get my shit together, right? And I'm like, I gotta, you know, get my credits up and do all this. My dad gets out of jail from all this time. He had went to jail for manslaughter, for killing somebody with his bare hands. And um, he gets out. He's looking for me. They're like, she in the streets. So he finds me. And he's like, I want you to come live with me. I'm like, oh, okay. But I'm looking at him like, well... I'm already in this school. I don't want to leave my school. I'm trying to get my credits up. I can't go to a regular school. I'm at a continuation school. So he's like, don't worry about none of that. Long story short, things started getting weird with him. I felt the vibe. I always had like this strong intuition about me. That's why it was cool for me to go out to the streets because I felt like I was safe. Like I knew what was going to happen, when to stop. You, da -da -da. Can a, you can read a guy quickly? I could read anybody quickly. <laughs> That's the thing. And I don't use it in a bad way. I don't try to take advantage, but you know, I know what it is. I know what's up. I think God gave me that for real. That's so strong. What, what did your intuition tell you about your dad? Okay, so he's like, my gut is telling me like, your, God, your dad is about to try something. So I had a boyfriend at the time and he was like a game banger from 30s, Harlem 30s, right? And it seemed like my dad was jealous of the boy. and. The fact that my dad just got out, he wanted to spend time with me. But I kept telling him, listen, on the weekends, I chill with my boyfriend. So he's like, well, what about me? I'm like, OK, well, you just got out. You know, we got to build that. He told me, you're too hard. You're too aggressive. I'm your dad. Da, da, da. So then he tells me, like, you can't talk to this boy no more. I'm like, you can't you're tell old. me. 17. I'm like, you can't tell me what to do. He like, um, so are you guys fucking? I say, yep. He like, let me meet him. He met him. He tried to beat him up, threaten him, do all this stuff. I got, I get mad. Then he tell me like, listen, I just need to sit you down and tell you the real. Sat me down, sat in front of me just like this. No shirt on, just boxers on. This is, my heart really start racing. Like, what is about to happen? He's like, and you know, not a lot of people know this. Only a few people, but I'm going to share it. Um, he's like, listen, I'd rather you fuck me than fuck any nigga on the street. So I look like, this some Jerry Springer type shit. So what is he about to do? Like, is he about to try me? Mind you, he just got out of jail from manslaughter. So my mind and my intuition is telling me, go along with it because if you don't, he's going to rape you. So I'm like, so what are you saying? Like, you want me to have sex with you? My dad said, yeah, because I don't want you fucking nobody else. If you want to have sex, you could fuck me. So I'm like, and so he raises up and I like see his print in his boxes or whatever. So I get scared, like, Oh my God, like he's about to force this shit on me. So my mind telling me, if you just go along with it, you could run out. So I said, no, wait, 
He like, what, you think is too big for you? I'm like, this shit is getting too real. So I'm like, no, it's not too big for me. Ain't nothing big for me. So I have to tap back into how I really act instead of acting scared. So he went in the room. I know I said, so go in the room. I said, go in the room. I got to get in the shower. I got to get ready. I'm like, if you want to do this shit now. He like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, go in the room. So he went in the room. I ran the shower. I called my best friend like, bitch, oh my God, I'm about to come to your house. So I peeked in the room and I seen him at the edge of the bed, like, you know, like he was contemplating or thinking about something. So I'm like, this motherfucker. And after that, I just ran out. So of course, you know, he called my phone like, are you gonna tell anybody? So I ended up telling my mom, you know what I'm saying? And I wasn't even in her household, but I told my grandma first and I told my best friend's mom, then my best friend's mom said, tell your grandma. Then my grandma said, tell your mom. And my mom said, you can't never be around him again, period. And we just never talked again. So the next year, that's when I, you know, first, you know, had my um, my son the next year. So I see my dad at a stop stoplight talking to a young girl and she was pregnant. She was a Hispanic girl. She was pregnant and she had a stroller and he was talking to her. And I'm like, he's still at it. So maybe he just, you know, like a creep. And I just looked at guys like they wasn't nothing. And ever since then, I really start going in. That's when I start finessing people. So I realized like the anger with that, like this is how my dad turned out. I'm about to get everything that I could get from every man. And that's just all this to it. Imagine if he would have penetrated. My head probably would have been fucked up. So I looked at it like I got the one up, you know? That's how I always looked at things. Like I got the one up, ain't nobody about to have a one up on me, da 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 Which it don't end up like that. You know, you do get burned in the streets a lot, but that's what I thought. I mean, and would you consider what you're doing, you're in the streets or are you dealing with a higher caliber of men? Now I'm dealing with a high, higher caliber of men. Where, where, where do you meet men? To, to finesse. So everywhere, you know, rich areas. Um, but before I started doing that, I was like in the streets, just like random. And then um, you can finesse any man, right? I could finesse anybody. Like you don't even have to have, I made people who wasn't a trick, a trick. Like they literally, they wasn't lying. Like they didn't do all what they did. I would break their pockets. I'm talking about, I don't care till you have nothing. So what? Get it again. You got a job, don't you? That was my mentality. Like, I I never work. Never. And I've had a whole lot of stuff. I've, I'm always taken care of, you know? What's the most you've gotten from one sure day? Um, One night, 2,900. It was like Christmas Eve, 2,900. And it was to the point to where he asked me, like, do you have a friend? I called my friend. She got like 2,100 from him. And I'm like, I could have got more. But... It was cool. What have you learned about men from living this life? What I learned about men is a lot of successful men and just men, period, they need love. They need love. You know, it's a void that they're trying to fill in. So that's why I was always there like, well, I could play the part. You know, I don't, I'm not a hoe. I'm somebody who makes you feel good, you know? What's more important to you, love or money? Oh, love. You know, love. I've learned that love is so much more important. And I have gotten so much more spiritual. I was always spiritual, right? And mature. You know, people used to say, oh, you before your time. But even more now, being through what I've been, going through what I've been through. I mean, I don't... Oh, it's some stories that I can't even talk about on this interview. That's how crazy they are, you know? And it's to the point to where I look at people much more than what I used to look at them. I used to look at them like nothing because it was money over everything at one point. I need the money, I need the money. And then my dad, even though he was a creep, he had like a reputation for having a lot of money and, you know, being a dope dealer. And, you know, he was a professional boxer, but he kept going to jail. And they had me so young. My dad was 14, my mom was 15 when they had me. And by that time, he was already having like four and five cars at a time, selling dope. I would go visit him in prison and stuff like that. 
And so growing up without him, I always wanted to kind of be like him. You know, like I want to have the money. I want to have the cars. I want to have the name. And I did just about that, you know, having the name, having the money, having the cars. Um, ended up singing, had the kids that I wanted. But the way I was going about things, I could have got hurt, too. So I was trying to stay off the street street, but I'm always in the streets. I'm always networking, like even getting to these people. I talk to one person, we network, and I get to the bag, as we call it, right? I would literally talk to, oh, you a dope dealer? You a, who you know? Who your clients? Who your customers? Who you? I would be all up in everybody's pockets trying to get some because I need it. And I know a nigga ain't going to try to give it to me, so I got to go and get it. And I'm not giving my money to nobody. I didn't had fights with pimps for not giving them my money or if they see me or, you know, get off the block. A few times I done stood on these little hoe strokes like, who finna pull up? You know, let me see what happens in 30 minutes. I didn't did that before, but it's just not my style. And your kids have how many different fathers? So two. So I have five kids. I got two. Are, are the fathers in their lives? No, and they somewhat in and out, but they like trying to figure out what I'm doing. I have the type of baby fathers who don't even care about the kids. It's more like, bitch, what you doing? They disrespect me a lot. I went through domestic violence with baby daddies and stuff like that. And that's why I really just always finesse. I'd rather be around somebody who wants love. That's why I end up with these men. I can't be around nobody putting their hands on me. And that's traumatic. Like. I was getting beat up at a, at a point in time. I'm like, I might as well have a pimp, you know? And baby daddies do be acting like pimps because they want everything from you and they don't want you to have nothing. No. Some of them. Yeah. Do you think there's any chance of you getting out of this lifestyle? <sighs> you're addicted, I mean, you're addicted to it. Yeah. <laughs> but, because you got to understand, I heard, which we all have heard, as long as you got a pussy, you should never be broke. So I'm just saying that. Because why be out here broke when you don't have to? Like, come on now. Not saying that you're using your pussy, but this pussy right here is power. It's really power. And like, I have more to me than just pussy. I have intellect, you know. I have a certain touch. I have a certain sound. Um, your personality. A personality. I've been through a lot. Um, I'm a good talker. I'm a good listener. Things like that. You know, it adds to everything. So I'm more than what I do. So, you know, and but God, he got a purpose with me. I know that for a fact. And then, two, I also want to, like, you know, tell girls, like, when it comes to this type of shit, like my grandma say, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. So just remember that. <laughs> do you regret getting into this lifestyle? I low-key regret it sometimes, though. Mm -hmm. I know some people say they don't have no regrets. I just regret how I did it at first because that's all people remember. They remember the bad shit. They don't remember. No, they're not going to remember. They don't even care about how you're doing it now. They remember the bad shit. And... How I do it now, I had to do it like that because what they knew me of, it was burnt out. I was wilding out. I mean, some people to this day be like, you just don't give a fuck. And I'm like, I do. I do give a fuck. But I had to come in this game aggressive and not caring because either I'm going to eat or I'm going to get ate up. And I don't want to get ate up. And the streets is no joke. Like, I'm telling you, like. I used to get into it with niggas, a lot of guys, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, because they didn't want me making money on my own, not involving them. I'm just gonna say that. I ain't gonna put no pimps on blast, but I didn't had it out, you know, with a few. And I'm like, who they, who you think you is, you know? And it made me even more mad. Like I wanna get some more money. Like I wanna go finesse even harder now and just so much anger. Meanwhile, me and my mom is not getting, we don't have no good relationship still to this day. She look at me like, she told me a few times, like, something gonna happen to you. She said, one of these niggas is gonna kill you. And I'm like, you wishing death on me? She like, 
No, I'm just calling it how I see it. You can't keep preying on these men. I'm like, I'm not preying on them. They know what I'm doing. They want it. They don't want you. Well, I want their money. And, and I'm like, but I'm, you know, I'm grown. Yeah, but you've been doing this. And, you know, being young, she knew how you out here in the streets popping up with bamboos and jewelry and how you got a car at 15 and 16. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you, where'd you get this shit from? Hush money. You find you have to adapt your personality and maybe your speaking style with different guys. Yeah. Like a white guy, you'll you'll talk a little yep. less ghetto. Yep, less ghetto. Um, so let's hear let's hear how you talk to a rich white guy. So, hey, babe. <laughs> how was your day? How are you feeling? Did you eat anything? Oh, so you're, you're, How's work? Right. You know, rubbing his head and just talking to him and like his therapist. And I just let them vent, just vent. And some of them is like, oh, I like that ghetto shit. Some of them you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. And then if Sometimes I'm putting, like yeah, if, if I'm putting on an act, they're like, be yourself. I'll give you more money. And I'm like, oh, he liked this ghetto shit. Well, fuck it then. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sometimes I'll have the ones like, Oh, my neighbors. Oh, we're going out. Oh, don't do this. Oh, make sure you don't wear nothing too revealing. Da, 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 da. And I love it, though. I really love it. Um, you will be surprised who likes who. My clients, Asians, all races, all races. So, you know, they love it. And um, it's just I can't get out of it because I know that if I wasn't worth it, I wouldn't be getting it. And I, as long as my intent is good, you know, I'm getting the money to take care of my family, take care of me. Because think about it. I can't sit up at no nine to five and just get a little bitty check. I can't do it. Yeah, not, not with five kids. Not with five kids. It's not enough. So it's like, it's not like, oh, I just don't want to do the right things. No, I, it got to make sense. And I'm a beautiful black woman. I know you love your kids, but do you regret having kids? No, that's one thing I don't regret, only because I wanted kids. And- It just puts your back against the wall financially. Yes, they break me. And then, you know, like spending the time and then kind of like be like a role model too. Because if you if you had no kids, you'd be free to go to Miami, go to- you know, Listen, I'd be in Tokyo right now. I would be doing something different. And I always think about that, but I try not to have a regret with kids because I'm the one who laid down and kept it. You know, I could have had an abortion. I got a few abortions before. So if I kept my kids, obviously God wanted me to have them. Everything happens for a reason. So, and it's a purpose. And them kids be slowing me down because I can be more wild, way more wild. Just had a situation last night, but I could be way more wild, you know, but God stops me. What would you say, darling, is the uh, most important thing you've learned in your life? The most important thing I've learned is just how you treat people, you know, make sure while you out here in these streets, you don't treat people bad because it will come back on you. Um, and then two, just have a purpose with everything because you could be making all this money and it's going nowhere. And the same way how you get it, you lose it. Like all of these sayings that people say, it is really true. And you got to live by something, stand for something, you know, don't fall for anything. Because if I fell for anything, that's how you could lose your life. You know, why am I here? How long am I going to be here? You know, who is this guy? Is it protected? Because, you know, a lot of these guys, too, they like to have unprotected sex. They don't care. So you got to protect yourself. Oh, but he's going to give me $3,000 and probably a disease that you can't get rid of, too. So are you going to be smart? Because I, you know, I did jail time, too. In the middle of all of this, I went to jail, the L.A. County jail, and I went for a year. They sentenced me with two years will have. Before. Getting some money, fraud, you know, running up in banks. Because like I told you, you you doing one sin, <laughs> other sins is going to come, right? So it was another opportunity, some foreign guy. Oh, you could get this. We could clear the checks. Da, 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 da. So I end up getting, I put girls on. And, you know, they don't know how to come in and play the part like me. 
So they got their ID took. They got looked at. They ended up snitching on me. So when they snitched on me, I'm getting my hair done. Undercovers come get me, take me to jail. I'm thinking I'm going to do a few weeks. They said two years with half. So I did a year in the county jail. I'm already popping. My name is popping already. I'm already single with YG at this time. Other girls that I, you know, that made money with in the street. I'm running into them. And I'm seeing what these girls is talking about, like these real prostitutes. When they pimp is not around, they just telling all the business. And I have a tight relationship with prostitutes because we have like the same background. And um, when I was just talking to them, I was just like, these hoes is stupid, you know, like this could never be me. But I was like ministering to them and I was like, teaching them certain things. And a few of them then told me like, I don't got no pimp no more, girl, I do what you do. You know, like I make my own money and I don't give it to nobody. And I realized I was more like, now I could be a madam if I want to, but I didn't want to do that. I was like, I don't, I don't want to steer these girls the wrong way. But I don't know why I said the jail shit, but you know, I, I, I've seen so much and heard so much Every time I'm in a real bad situation, God either stops it or he turns it into something else. And that's why I don't go so hard, hard. Because I'm like, but now I'm, I'm trying to start my businesses now. I'm, you know, I'm getting older now. So it's like, I don't want all this game to go to waste. Like I know so many, everybody that I know now, they got shops open, they got businesses. They were street guys, street women. They got clothing brands, all that. So I need to, now my thing is, okay, who's going to invest in me? So anybody who finesses or holds, you need to find you an investor, period. Who's about to put into what I want to do for the rest of my life? Because me with my kids, I need generational wealth. I don't want them just to be like, oh, my mama was a hoe and a singer and she was in the streets. Okay, what else? What are you going to leave for anybody? And so that's what I'm on. I'm looking for big time investors and stuff like that. I got a lot of ideas and a lot of dreams and a lot of things that I can make money off of. And I could use my street smart. You got to have street smart. Because if I wasn't smart, I would be beat up, drugged up, laced. A few niggas tried to lace me a few times. And I hit that motherfucker like, what is this? You know? Some girls don't know this. Some girls are afraid to say something. No, I know my worth, so I'm not about to go for anything. You're getting cussed the fuck out. I'm telling you what it is. I'm telling you what I want. We're going to keep it straight up and down. I'm going to keep it 100. You keep it 100. Any sneaky shit, I'm gone. And that's all it is to it, you know? Because I do love hard. Through all of this hard shit, I love hard. But I'm a Scorpio. You know, we love hard. I could fall in love with somebody in one night. The nerve of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tamir. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you.